Hey everybody, Manny Talibear here, now we're, and we're now on day 68 of, set of the seven-figure climb, and we're going to continue on our story with buying the pool room. And so uh, Bernie had given me a number of 10000 and I immediately tried, started coming up with that money. I sold a limousine, I sold a few other things, and then how this thing worked was Bernie didn't real, Bernie was wealthy. He didn't care whether the place was open or not because he wasn't making any money. And so Bernie would go up there three or four days a week. And if he, if it would, you know, and he had a bunch of other people who were handlers who just came in and opened the place and they ran it for Bernie and they didn't, and he didn't, and they didn't pay him. He didn't pay them anything. They just wanted to be there and they wanted to be around the place. So Bernie had all of these people running it for him and they were basically free help. And one of the guys who ended up coming in as a partner with me was one of those people who was running the place. And I kind of went to him because I felt like Bernie might not sell to me by myself because I had no experience running a business and because he did have some money and he had that relationship with Bernie. And so we worked this deal out and I felt like that I sat down and I felt like we had made a good arrangement. I was going, we, we were going to give him 6,500 down. He was financing the rest of it. And we were going to take possession. We were going to put everything in my name. And I wanted to be able to paint the place and refelt the tables because I felt like it needed to look new. It looked needed to look like a change in ownership. And so, you know, this is, you know, the first time I talked to him around October of 98. And then we talk again in, you know, at the, at the very end of October 98. And his lease ends April 99. So we've got a little window here, but not a big window. And ultimately, we make arrangements to sit down and do a inventory, inventory the building down. Because what we're doing is what we would call an asset purchase. And I'm doing an asset purchase because I'm not going to put the lease in my name. I'm not guaranteed a lease after April. And so I'm essentially giving him the 10,000 for all of the equipment. And what we ultimately were buying, we were buying 15, 15 dynamo drop pocket tables, uh, probably 50 house cues, maybe, maybe 60. I don't know. There were, there were about 15 or 20 bar stools. There are about six or seven tables, probably 15 or 20 chairs. Uh, there was some, Q inventory, maybe $1,500 in Q inventory on the wall that we could sell. So nicer cues that, you know, $100 and $200 cues that we could sell. And then there was the inventory of candy and pop in the back. And we had that. And that's essentially what we were going to buy. And so now this is the thing. I don't know what happened. Uh, we made this agreement. We were going to meet in about 10 days. And when we showed up, Brian, my partner, Brian, showed up with two other people. And I don't know why he did that. I mean, I wouldn't have done that. And maybe that kind of set Bernie off because we were doing a business transaction. We were going to inventory everything down, write everything out, and then he was going to type it out. And we were going to sign it. And we were going to basically make arrangements to do this deal. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if, if it was because he, Brian brought these two people or maybe it was because Bernie was having a bad day because sometimes Bernie would have a bad day. But anyway, we got there and Bernie basically said, I don't like this. I don't think you guys are going to succeed. I don't want you making no changes. We're not putting nothing in your name. You're going to give me 6,500 and you're not putting anything in your name and you're not making any changes until I am paid. And he just went off and I, I didn't understand it. And so, you know, he went to the back for something and I looked at Brian and I said, Brian, this ain't going to work, man. I, I can't do this. And Brian was mad because Brian wanted to buy. He wanted to sign because he thought if he, we didn't sign, we would never get a deal. And and so Bernie comes up, back and I just stood up and I shook his hand. And I said, Ber Bernie, I appreciate everything, but this ain't for me. This just ain't the way I want to buy it. And I left and I decided I was going to go find the money. Because I, my deal was I wanted this place, but I wanted it in my name. And I'm going to tell you my concern. My concern was I was going to take that pool room and I was going to 
raise revenue to seven or eight thousand really, really fast. And then he wouldn't want to sell it anymore. He wouldn't need to because it was would be making money because he wasn't paying anybody to run the place. But, you know, but like I said, I'm naive. That was my concern. And that that's what, where we were at. And so I left. And my friend and Muncie, who I had been trying to buy a place with all those years ago, had bought a room. And so I went to his place. I gave him a bunch of credit cards, and he basically maxed them all out and gave me the money. I, I basically got cash advances off of all of them. And I ended up putting together $15,000 between my, I think my partner came up with $2,000, and I came up with $13,000. I figured we needed Ten thousand for the room. We needed two thousand for the first month's rent. Two thousand for miscellaneous and overhead and pop and candy and stuff like that. And then a thousand to refill the tables. And so, you know, Bernie a couple times I'd seen him. We didn't really talk about anything, but he basically said he didn't want to sell it anymore. He was just going to sell everything off individually. And so I walked in one day, and you know, like the the first week of November or something, second week of November, and I said, Bernie. I know you said you don't want to sell, but if you decide you do want to sell and you change your mind, I've got 10 grand. I can give you 10 grand and I can buy this place, but you don't have to, an to answer. It's fine. I understand where you're at, but if you decide you want to sell, that's fine. Well, a few weeks later, I show up and it's, it's Thanksgiving weekend and Thanksgiving weekend in this pool room was always just crazy. Because, I mean, it would just be packed with people because you had, you had all the high school kids and you had all the, the, the college kids and they would go there to meet, to meet up and hang out because it's, you know, they're, they're in school and they haven't seen any of their friends for a long time. And so I went in and on, I don't know, I think I got there seven, there's like a 10 person waiting list already, but Brian was already there. And I walked up to Brian and I said, man, we missed this deal. This is crazy. And he said, no, Bernie wants to talk to us for some reason. Did you say anything to him? And I just said, not really. And we we waited till the place closed and we walked behind the counter. And how this is how Bernie did it. Bernie would start the drawer with $100 at the, the, on the first of the month and he would just let it run until the end of the month. He wouldn't, he just let the, the money pile up I didn't do that at all. I took the money out of the place every day and took it home and put it in the safe. I wasn't like that. And so I went in there, went, went back there, and Bernie had $4,600 or something like that on the counter. But, you know, and I said, what's going on, Bernie? He said, he said, I don't know. I think we're missing $100 somewhere. He said, anyway, you guys want to buy a pool room, and I want to sell one. So he said, I want you, this is what I want you to do. You're going to give me $1,000, and you're going to take this place over December 1st. And you're going to run it for me for 30 days. And at the end of that 30 days, as long as everything's fine, I'm going to take the place over. And I'm going to, I mean, you're going to take the place over on the 1st of January. You're going to write me one check and then you're going to own it and you're going to be running it for you. And that's what happened. We took the place over December 1st. We ran it for Bernie for 30 days. And I worked for my tail end off for nothing, didn't get paid a dime, but I learned everything there was to know about that business in 30 days. And I was learning it on his money. And it's probably the best and best time investment I ever made. And so, and ultimately that's what happened. Bernie came in on the first, I wrote him a check and he actually, what happened is the 31st was New Year's Eve and he was in there. In, in there on New Year's Eve, and he said he was staying until he ran out of beer, and when he ran out of beer, I wrote him a check, and and we shook hands, and and then that was it, and I, I owned the place, and unfortunately, my partnership didn't work out too well. There were, there were some problems there, um, and what's very interesting about this, you know, I, I've been struggling with a lot of things, and just out of the the clear blue sky, that guy called me. I know he sent me, Brian sent me a text, a DM in Facebook, and I hadn't talked to him for probably, I bet I hadn't talked to Brian in at least eight years, eight years at least, maybe, I don't know, man, My, I, maybe I'm off on that a little bit. I, I, I've been here for seven years, and I hadn't talked to him in a while, but he actually sent me a DM, and we ended up talking for a couple hours, uh, and so what only happened, the problem with Brian and I, 
the first thing is Brian was supposed to come up with a certain amount of money to own half of it, and he didn't. And so it was very sketchy because Brian was a partner, but he couldn't own 50% because he didn't have ne nearly as much money involved in it as I did. And it's a lot of work if you only own 10% of it. I mean, he was basically being forced to work half the time, but he didn't own half of it. And so that's that was the problem with it. Um, but I can tell you that we hit the ground running. We we painted the place. We refelted the tables. The first month we did 48. The second month we did 52. Then we did 56. And then 78. Then 97. And then we eventually were doing twelve to $15,000 a month. And what ultimately happened was that, you know, we had a few troublemakers, just a few, just like two or three people. And I said, we're going to get rid of these people. And Brian was scared to death to throw anyone out because we didn't have anybody coming in. It was really slow most of the time. And I told him, I said, Brian, we need to pack this place with guys, be girls. We need to pack this place with girls because if we do that, we'll pack it with guys and they'll spend the money. And the only way we're going to do that is we're going to have to get rid of all these people who chase all the girls off who come in here. And so that's what we did. We made a lot of rules. We said, you can't walk up to people playing. If you're here, you get a table and you play. You can't bother other people who are in here. If two people are in here on a date, you can't talk to them. And we threw a few people out and it really changed the whole dynamic of the place. And I'll be honest with you, we owned that place for like four or five years. I did. And I, I don't think we ever even had a near fight. I mean, nothing. It was just, and it was just, you know, wall to wall people all the time. And it was upper middle class college kids and high school kids. And they, you know, they did well and they had money and they, the place, the place just thrived. And so that's kind of how I got involved in the pool room business. Unfortunately, this is what happened. So I bought the place and I took it, started sending them checks in April and I was freaking out. And, but Bernie, this is the thing. Bernie was very, very friendly to me and he helped me out so much. Bernie would come in a few times a week and we would just talk shop. He gave me all kinds of insights and ideas. He would, he would show me the information on the bowling alley. Uh, what's funny about the bowling alley, the, so bowling, I don't know, there's probably seven or eight revenue streams. So you've got, you've got approach, you've got bowling, you, you rent lanes, you've got shoes, you rent shoes, you've got a, um, you got a what is it a shop a, a pro shop who does who that sells equipment you rent lockers you have you have uh, vending you have you have video games and things like that and then you have a restaurant and then you have a bar and he showed me the bar bill for that place and the bar bill was just what they spent on alcohol and it was like. $50,000 a month or something. I mean, his bar bill, the bar, just that one little piece of this thing was just, you know, way beyond what I was doing. I mean, I mean, he, they were probably doing, they're probably doing 750,000 to a million a year in that place minimum. But like I said, he showed me so much stuff and he would come in and talk to me. And so we were, you know, so like what, you know, I was concerned that I wasn't going to get a lease. And Bernie just basically said, Manny, look at this place. He said, there's, there's one other, one or two other businesses in this whole strip mall. Why would they throw you out? Why would they throw anyone out that's giving them money? And like, I didn't get that, but he did at a high level and they were taking my checks. He said, you don't have anything to worry about. And if they quit taking your checks, you still don't have anything to worry about because they're not going to do anything with you for a while. They're not going to like, you know, just evict you. They're going to, you know, they're going to, they're just not going to mess with it. And so what happened is they basically came to me and they offered me a lease. And the lease was, it wasn't a lease for me. So we, you know, we're pool room and pool room. We were open from, you know, 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. And sometimes I'd get there at 3 or noon. On the weekends, I'd show up at noon and I would run till 3 at 3 a.m. And they were giving me a lease for like a, a shoe store. So you eight, eight to nine at night and you got to be out of here by nine and your weekends, you're only allowed to be open till five. 
and just a bunch of nonsense. And I got to be there at eight in the morning. And I, I said, this ain't going to work. And so I had a conversation with the guy and I said, look, I ain't doing any of this. This isn't going to work. This isn't, I don't, some days I don't even make any money until 930 at night, but between 930 and 3 a.m. I might do 300 bucks or 400 bucks. I said, I can't sign, can't agree to this. And so, and so um, he said, well, go ahead and sign it. And we'll just kind of overlook that, you know, as long as you pay your rent, we're not going to do anything with you and you'll be fine. But you just go ahead and sign the lease the way we worded it. And we'll just kind of overlook the fact, you know, you got non-traditional hours or whatever. And so Bernie comes in like a day later and he says, don't sign it. They're that's that's they're messing you around. He said what they're doing is they're wanting to tie you to a lease that you can't honor. And then if they decide they don't want you anymore, they can just throw you out because you're not agreeing to the terms that, that you signed. He said, don't sign it. Don't agree to anything. And then what happened? The, then the craziest thing ever happened. So I'm sending checks, been sending checks for about five or six months. And the person who owned the building vanished. No one knows what happened to him. He disappeared and it created a real problem. See, you have a building owner and that building owner, he was getting the income from that building and he was doing the maintenance and doing things and he was trying to make the place nice and he was trying to get tenants in, but, but he disappeared. So when he disappeared, there were like three or four companies that had mortgages on this thing and they all battled, and I think AUL, American United Life Insurance, ended up with ownership. It went into receivership. AUL ended up owning it, but they're not in the business of maintaining property or leasing property. So they had to turn it over to a property management, and they're trying to sell it. And they're not, and and it's very very difficult to lease the property because lease anything on the property because everything's kind of falling apart because AUL is not giving them any money to do any repairs on this building because they don't want to repair the building. They just want to sell it. And so unfortunately, the building just kept going downhill and downhill to the point that the city decided it was an eyesore and the city decided they were going to basically deem this area blighted and they were going to do an eminent domain and they were going to buy it, take the building. And that's exactly what they did. And I essentially got a letter that said, we're taking this building through eminent domain. You're going to be, you're going to be vacated. You have X amount of days to get out. And I went from having a business to having no business. And what's interesting, unfortunately, in the meantime, I had bought a hair salon with tanning beds. I'd bought an advertising publication. Everything is in Carmel there. And now I have a pool room that is closing and I have to move that. And unfortunately, when we moved it, it didn't work out very well. And so we will tell that story on the next video and I'll see you all on the other side. And thanks a lot.